is the beginning of our Blended Family Seminar, and the invitation has gone out, and we're still waiting for much of a response. For those of you that are uh, planning to help, we still encourage you to come, and we're going to just be prepared for the Lord to bring uh, those that He has uh, put into place. The Crozers, you might be praying for them. Her sister passed away this past week and been anticipating that, and uh, you might just be praying for them with the added uh, questions and travel. I think she's in the Denver area, and uh, we uh, think that the service for her sister is this coming Saturday. It just adds a little bit of extra stress for them as they want to minister to um, those that are struggling with some of the blended family issues this evening, and if over the next uh, three Sunday nights or four weeks total. And so be praying for that, not only for the ministry this evening, that the Lord would perhaps still bring those that he uh, is uh, interested in using this in their hearts and lives, but also for the Croziers as they deal with just the family loss in, in their circumstances. So again, the other announcements and things that are going on are in your welcome page. I hope that you will take them and make a, a note of them. Again, welcome. It's great to see you. Let me ask God's blessing on our time. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity that this morning represents for your work in our hearts and lives. And Lord, I invite that work and that sense of your presence and your eagerness to respond to the needs and to the opportunities in each of our lives. Lord, again, thank you and ask that your work would be done by your spirit in this place this morning. In your name I pray. Amen. We have a special opportunity today to welcome to our church some representatives from Camp Rivercrest. And uh, they're going to come and uh, talk a little bit about the camp and uh, introduce some of the ministries and opportunities represented at Camp Rivercrest. We have uh, two that are going to come. I think Tom, Tom Ely, kind of the director for development, is going to come first and later. Uh, John Clausen, the executive director of the camp, is going to also be part of introducing some of the camp and some of the ministries. Are you going to come now or after the video? All right, we're going to start with the video and uh, see where it goes. Thank you for allowing us to come today. Uh, my name is Tom Ely, as Nate mentioned. Um, Part-time director at Camp, uh, Camp Rivercrest. 
like to be known as the ambassador of vision because that's kind of what they told me about my job was when I took it a few years ago. I grew up in Fremont, so I'm very familiar with the camp. Uh, my one claim to fame is that I actually attended Speeby, which is now Crown College, with your pastor. I know he looks a lot younger than me, so it's hard to believe, but we are actually the same age. So we have, we have a great long history. We served on the camp board together years ago and the Dexcom Executive Committee. So I said I always love, I would love to come see your church and come to Princeton and get to speak about camp a little bit and share it. So how many out there, just to show of hands, have been to Camp River Crest? Okay, quite a few familiar with it, at least half. Okay, well, um, a lot of things have happened over the last few years. Uh, a little bit of quick history. Uh, John said this morning we could each talk, but he said age before beauty. So that's why I'm up here first, <clears throat> because I've been there so long. But the camp actually started in 1958, and a bunch of local pastors got together and said, you know, we'd like to create an atmosphere, a summer camp for our students. And so they raised some funds and bought the land out there on, by Fremont and uh, started it, and it, it's, it's gone real well. Uh, it's gone through a lot of changes over the years. If you haven't been there lately, um, I would suggest you come out and visit. I went there as a child. I went there with my two brothers. Um, believe it or not, I was not part of that initial discussion in 1958. I came a few years later uh, with a horse and buggy, but we actually didn't have a pool. Nate and I were talking about it. We didn't have a pool there. We used the, the, the camp next door for a pool. And we had a great time. My brothers went there, like I said. My family went there, grew up close to there. My daughters attended there. It's just a special place for us and our family. Uh, I don't really believe in the term holy ground, but when I drive out to camp, and I'm, I'm part of it and doing the activities. I just feel a presence, God's presence. And there's been a lot of lives that have changed and, and uh, I think become closer to Christ over the years out there. A lot of volunteers. I know I talked to a few people here, a lot of people have come out and helped at camp before. Really that's how camp makes it, is on volunteers and the camp programs and different things. So I would encourage you, if you haven't been out there again, in the last few years there's been a lot of changes, things that have happened. Uh, we built, uh, in 2005, the camp board got together with some of the churches and said, you know, I don't think we can make it as just a summer camp. We really need to expand the ministry into a year-round uh, retreat center. So we went to the uh, national office and took out some, uh, some loan monies and some startup money and created two beautiful lodges that are now uh, on the Platte River Bluff that are rented out nearly every weekend. Then we had another problem. We put together a master plan, had another problem because now we couldn't feed all these people in our dining hall. It was just too small. And so there again, we went back to the camp board and we went back to a few individuals and, the, and we raised funds this time without any loan and built a new dining hall in the place of the existing one that seats almost 300 people. So it's a beautiful facility. Everything is heated in air. Everything's got it now. And uh, like I said, a lot of groups come out now. You're welcome to come out anytime. We have board retreats. We have women's retreats. We have youth groups that come out. We have all kinds of different activities besides just our summer camp. Our main thrust still is summer camp. We have a record number last year. Over 1,100 kids attended camp. So it's just been a tremendous thing. So many lives changed. And I have all these stats and everything. And I decided, you know what? People really care more about stories than stats. So I had to tell you a quick story. I was welp welcoming some parents in one week. And we get kids from all backgrounds, all different understandings of the faith. And as a man was walking out, he turned around. He came back to me, just dropped off his son. And he said, by the way, um, what religion is this camp? <coughs> kind of caught me by surprise. And I said, you mean like Christianity? No, no, no. Are you Protestant or Catholic? I said, well, we, we'd be considered Protestant. Um, so are you some kind of a cult? I said, no, no, we're not a cult. We're a Christian Missionary Alliance. So he said, is that a Lutheran, Lutheran church? I said, no, that's not a Lutheran church. He said, well, is that like a Presbyterian church? I said, no, it, it's Christian and Missionary Alliance. That's our denomination. He said, well, what in the world do they, what in the world do they believe? This is as he's walking out the door and dropped his kid off and had no idea what he was dropping him off for. So I said, we just teach Jesus. We just love Jesus. We teach Jesus. That's the basis of our faith. Oh, well, that'll be all right then. And he walks out the door. <laughs> so, you know, we get them from all background, all different, different places. So anyway, I would encourage you to, to just send your kids, come out and visit. If you're a grandparent, maybe help your 
uh, grandson, granddaughter, come out. Just uh, take advantage. This is your camp. This is a CMA camp. And um, we just want to serve, and we're just so glad to be out there. And we've celebrated about 55 years uh, of camping ministry. So without any, uh, me rambling on, I'm going to introduce John Clausen. We've got to work together now for four years. Great guy. Just really enjoy working with him and uh, just doing a fantastic job of the camp. John? <laughs> well, thank you, Tom. Yes, we're excited to be there. I love working together with Tom too. I think that's part of what really is neat about uh, the camp right now is we have a really good staff that really work together well. Uh, we're in it uh, together as a family. We look at each other as family and, and so it's just really a privilege to work in, in uh, there and be a part of that. Um, I was going to share a little bit about specifically the summer camp program. Uh, Rivercrest, that is their, our strong suit for sure. And uh, this year's theme is perseverance as we talk about um, really uh, passages from Hebrews and how uh, Christ, how we run the race and, and the race is set before us and through uh, his help and his endurance, his grace, we're able to uh, to do that. And we're going to be diving into that this year with the kiddos. And uh, we have different weeks of camp. If you're not familiar with the summer camp program, uh, they're age specific weeks. So like an overnighter camp is first through third grade and you have mini camp third through fifth grade and, and so forth all the way up to uh, senior high uh, camp which is 9th through 12th grade. So, And each week is very specific to where we have the same theme, but it's it's put appropriately to that. Uh, the, the message is geared around to, to fit appropriately to that age. Well, it has just been amazing to see how God has worked. As Tom shared, we had a record number of uh, campers last year with 1,130. And this year, I actually, we, were, we just had our meeting here this last uh, week, and we we're, we're actually 20% ahead of last year in registrations year to date. So if you're considering sending kids, grandkids, or whatever to camp, I wouldn't wait too long to sign up as I think we're going to have some waiting lists, long ones this year. And it's just exciting to see what God is doing at, at Rivercrest when it comes to ministry and and uh, just uh, just to share, it, it, it's uh, I, there's so many stories that we can share about uh, kids change. I had a parent come up to me and say, you know, my daughter went to this was last last summer and the same thing came in, came to camp and she just I cannot explain to you how she has changed. She prays at meals and she initiates it. She's reading her Bible. She's studying uh, God's word and it's all because she wants to and it's not a matter of, well, that's just because what we do. And it's just neat to hear that. So she says, she, I can't express how thankful I am to have her at camp. And there's numerous stories too of, of uh, fam one family we were able to help with financial aid uh, to be able to come. And uh, I was talking with his father. He was just so excited that her, his daughter, daughter was able to come. And they couldn't afford it otherwise if we didn't have a, a financial aid program for that. And it was life-changing for her. In fact, she accepted Christ as her savior that week. It was just amazing. And uh, she got that. And so uh, just a lot of neat things going. Um, so Persevere we have going on this year. We also have other retreats as well throughout the year. We just got off of having winter camp. Uh, those are for, uh, for junior high and senior high youth groups. And it was very, very good this year. We had a good time. Father-son retreat's going to be coming up here in March 11th and 12th. Sam Larson, if some of you know Sam Larson, he was on the Alone series at History Channel. He's actually going to be at camp uh, for both uh, the father-son retreat and the wild game dinner and be sharing about some of his experiences on that program and how, uh, and also doing some demonstrations on how to build a fire and survive in the wilderness. So if your fathers and sons want to do that, that and that's generational, it could be grandpa and son or grandson, however you want to do that, but that's ready. And then mother-daughter retreat coming in April, and then family camp in May. So there's just a number of things. The best thing to do is go onto our website, You'll and you can pick up one of these cards. We have plenty of these cards that gives the website. You can see everything that's going on, but we're just really excited to share in, in what's going on, and excited for how God is leading camp. We want to honor him the best we can, and in, in prayerfully giving prayer over the ministry, we ask for that as well, too. Uh, we know that uh, uh, this is a praying, praying denomination, and we're just really, really thankful for your prayers and, and support as well that you have, have given to Rivercrest, and really ask for that as we continue to uh, be good stewards of what God has given us at Rivercrest. So. <clears throat> well, thanks, you guys. I, I'm actually a, a product of Camp Rivercrest myself. I went there with Tom, although he's, he's a little younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd take just a second and have those of you out there that have a Camp Rivercrest testimony, either 
from yourself or your family where you have seen uh, camp make an impact in your life. Camp Rivercrest impacted your life. So we're going to have some testimonies from there for you guys since you have some testimonies for us. So you have to go really quick though. So you have to stand right up and uh, say just the impact that you've seen. Okay. all week, but her parents were like heartbroken that they hadn't had her daughter with them. And so we rushed out to Fremont to the camp, and she could care less that we came to pick her up. <laughs> she loved the camp, and as of today, she still has a, a very tight relationship with one of her counselors. Mm-hmm. Which is, it's, so it's just something that's not, you're done in June, right. and you go on with life. It's extended relationships that are built there. Absolutely. Cool. Somebody else? We know that camp has made a big difference. I, I would uh, think if I, I think it's true, we are, uh, our missionaries are, that we often promote and keep a relationship with at Advanced Gutens, and it was at Camp Rivercrest that he really felt Lord calling him to the mission field, and uh, the Lord has used camp in lots of different ways. John, just, just for a second, I was looking on the website and uh, just trying to see how full the camps were, and I noticed this really strange pricing structure. What's with that? You like you can either pay a lot or not quite as much or less. Yes. So what is with that? Yeah, you know that was that was something we. Uh, You're still doing that? Yeah, we are. We we've, we've done that now. Tom, do you remember this? It's been three or four years now. Four years. I think four years. Yes. And where this came to be was uh, we realized we didn't want to price anybody out of coming to camp, and we knew that camp had traditionally cost, which is tier A. You'll see that in the uh, if you get on there, and it's it, it, that's what camp had traditionally always cost. But we knew there was. Uh, Expenses. We had the question actually came of asking us is what does it really cost to send someone to camp? People just knew there's got to be more to this. I said, well, it's actually this. I said, well, you should let people know what it really costs because maybe that's their way of giving in some way of saying, hey, you know what? I can just pay it, but someone who doesn't can come at, at, at the tier A. So that's where this tier structure came out. Really, it's just more of a voluntary, voluntary way to say, hey, I can um, pay either this amount or I can pay this amount. Nobody even knows. By the way, I don't even know. I mean, I can, I mean, I can probably find out if I get into your account and just go all the way through, but we don't do that, and nobody else knows what you pay, and the experience doesn't change for the campers. It's just more of a way for, for uh, the ministry to get. We still raise over $100,000 to operationally float camp when it comes to, um, so we're, we're very much a donor base, and that's just one way of sharing, hey, this is what it really costs, and um, it gives families an option. Most most families are appreciative that they know what it does. So that's kind of kind yeah. of the, the synopsis behind that. So well, I hope you guys will take uh, time to visit with uh, Tom and John and uh, get to know them. Share additional stories about camp. They love to hear the stories about camp. I know. And uh, if you have other questions about the ministry and how it's developing, or if you we're wondering about how you could come along or partner with them to help with that $100,000 a year. They'd always be interested in really talking to you about some of those additional funding kind of 
ways that you can help make a difference through the camping ministry at, uh, at Rivercrest. Mm-hmm. How about if I just pray for y'all? Yeah, well, my Father, thank you so much for what you have done in the past at Camp Rivercrest. Mm-hmm. But Lord, we just look to you for your continued direction for the camp for the provision of the counselors and the staff that they need yet for this summer, for your preparation in the hearts and lives of those staff and, and uh, speakers and all the people that will come together seeking to minister to those kids in uh, that camp that will be there this summer. Lord, I just pray that uh, you would anoint that ministry with the sense of your presence that your word would come through clearly and reach deeply into the hearts and lives of each camper this summer. Lord, would you watch over them, protect the, the, each camper, each staff member as they seek to minister, give uh, those that uh, have oversight for John and for Tom and for the rest of those that take direct oversight over these ministries, give them wisdom as they seek to put together the programs, as they respond to the different uh, circumstances that come up over the camping season. Again, Father, we ask for your anointing on Camp Rivercrest, on those that serve there and the ministry that takes place. In your name, amen. Amen. Thank you. You bet, guys. Thanks for coming. Now, maybe you don't have a grandchild or a child or anybody that you really know that could go to camp. I'm pretty sure there's a, probably a place online where they could still donate funding to help the camp. Uh, it used to be I knew how much it costs to run the camp in a year, and it was... Do you have a number of what that is of a yearly cost to run a camp? For the whole camp, what does it take to run the facilities and everything? 600000 And so don't think that... Your $10 or $1 doesn't make a difference because it does, and it can make a change in the kid's life. So it's an opportunity if you don't know anybody. I'm sure you can, you, yeah, I'm sure you can go online and say, we would like to give this gift or whatever. There's probably a place for that, I'm guessing. So, All right, so there's your opportunity. No excuses, right? Now, yeah, I've told everybody, you all know. Uh, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> We're glad you're here this morning. Let's all stand. Lift up your voice to God. 